Dogs. All right, our guy Connor Riley from Dog Nation is here. He's with us all year long. He does an amazing job of covering the dogs. He said it. Off season, it just doesn't stop. And now we finally get a decision with Monk. And I want to start there before we talk about Bobo and ask you. You've been saying this all along, Connor. You said you felt like he was going to go back to the NFL. Why the Ravens, do you think? What's the deal there? He interviewed for a couple of different jobs um, because this is where he ends up now. He's going to be the offensive coordinator for the Ravens. Yeah, I think the big thing is he wanted offensive control at that NFL level. He wasn't looking to go back just to be an offensive coordinator in in, in name only. He wants to be a play caller. Uh, his last year in the NFL was an offensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns. He was not the play caller, and needless to say, it didn't go very well. Uh, I think with Baltimore – Look, it's an intriguing fit. Obviously, they have to figure out what they're going to do with Lamar Jackson. But if you look at the offensive personnel they have, I think two of the better skill players are tight ends and Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely. We saw what Munkin is able to do with a tight end heavy offense with Georgia running it through Brock Bowers. And there is some level of talent on the Ravens offense. And look, if, if Lamar Jackson comes back, great. You've got one of the five or six best quarterbacks in the NFL at your disposal, able to use him effectively. If, for example, the Ravens trade Lamar Jackson, let's say the Falcons give up three first-round picks in, in, in trade, you sort of allow Munkin to, to reshape that offense more so in his image. So, yes, there's some question about what's going to happen next with Lamar Jackson, but I think the either-or scenario is there. Either you have Lamar Jackson or you have a, a new-look offense re, rebuilt around more draft picks. I, I think makes it an appealing job to Munkin. And above all else, he is going to be the sole play caller there. He's not going to have to worry about John Harbaugh meddling in and, and having ideas there. And so that offensive freedom is going to be very important and a big reason why Monkhead ends up taking the offensive coordinator job with the Baltimore Ravens. Connor, how much was Mike Bobo involved with Todd Munkin? And what was his job? I know we hear consulting, but what was his, like in a day-to-day with the game plan? How involved was he with the quarterbacks? With coaching the quarterbacks, maybe not as much as we might think. I think the big thing with Monkey or with Bobo rather was play design, working out third down plays, working out red zone area execution, things along that. Uh, he Bo, or Munkin during when we got to talk to him in the month of December was quick to credit Mike Bobo with some of the play designs that we saw work out against both LSU and Ohio State, and then obviously in the national championship game against TCU there. But Bo has a long history of working with quarterbacks, developing quarterbacks. And I understand the trepidation that some Georgia fans might have out there, but I think Mike has done a good job of laying his hat there. It's just, it's, it's a totally different job that he steps into. than even the last time he was here in 2014, where I mind you, with Hudson Mason at quarterback, with Todd Gurley only playing six games with right. – one NFL offensive lineman who went on to be a fifth-round pick. Mm. And I guess you could count David Andrews, who's still playing in the NFL right now there as well. But the larger point there, that offense was nowhere near as talented and actually averaged more points per game than the Georgia offense did last season. So I know, you know, things didn't work out as a head coach at Colorado State. He was a one-and-done at both Auburn and South Carolina. But there's so much talent that he has at his disposal at Georgia right now. I find it hard to believe that he's not going to find some way to be successful. Why does Kirby go with him? I think familiarity is a big part of it. Look, Georgia's trying to win a third straight national championship, and Bobo was in the building this past season. He knows what Georgia has to work with. He knows that personnel well. And, look, in a day and age where college football is changing a lot, you know, NIL, transfer portal, uh, the college game has become less and less attractive. I know I heard earlier call, you know, Bo is not the perfect hire. Who is? Look at some of the coordinators on the offensive side of the ball that have been hired recently. Alabama fans weren't all that excited about Tommy Reese coming from Notre Dame. Notre Dame can't do better than, try, than, than trying to get Utah's offensive coordinator, Andy Ludwig. Uh, Miami hires Shannon Dawson out of Houston. There just aren't a lot of big-name offensive coordinator types out there in college football right now. And I think the way that college football has gone it, it is because of that. And so in bringing Bobo back, you bring back a guy who I think further doubles down on what has made Georgia successful these last few years. And sure, maybe you're getting high off your own supply, but the culture <laughs> that has been with what Georgia has been doing is how they've been winning. And I think Bobo gets that. He understands that. I think going forward, continuity is going to be an even bigger selling point for Georgia because I don't think Will Muschamp or Mike Bobo are ever really leaving to go anywhere else, and they're going to be at Georgia for the long haul. And those two guys, your coordinators, were Georgia alums who like being around Athens. That makes Georgia and Kirby Smart all the more attractive to come play for. 
It is our man, Connor Riley. It's K. Connor Riley on Twitter from Dog Nation. Give us the update as Mike Bobo was announced earlier today. We kind of knew that one was coming. What is the quarterback room going to look like? I know Carson Beck may be the first amongst equals. Brock Vandegriff, Gunnar Stockton. Who's going to leave? Who do you think is going to stay? How's that going to play out over the next spring into the summer? Yeah, I think the big thing to watch is does one of these quarterback leaves, and there's no point in avoiding the elephant in the room. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in seeing what Brock Vandergriff ultimately ends up doing. I think Carson Beck right now is sort of seen as the favorite to be the starter, but I think the, quarter, the coordinator change here maybe does level the playing field a little bit in terms of they are going to have to learn new verbiage, a little bit of a new system, but not, not, not something structurally different than what we've seen. It's not going to be something like where Munkin came in and, re- and replaced and revamped everything that James Coley was doing. There are going to be a lot of similar concepts that George is running. One interesting thing to note, though, and it's the third quarterback, at least in terms of age right now, Gunnar Stockton. When Mike Bobo was the offensive coordinator at South Carolina, Stockton, who was a five-star quarterback at that point in the process, elected to commit to South Carolina. There are deep ties between Stockton and the Bobo family here. And I know a lot of people in that building were really impressed with the way Gunnar Stockton came in last year and worked and put in the work, really impressed a lot of his teammates here. And I think, you know, maybe Carson Beckett probably still ends up being the starter this year. But long term, I think the Mike Bobo, Gunnar Stockton marriage is certainly something to watch as both those two develop and grow into their roles. A great point. And I'm glad you uh, pointed it out to us because, again, relationships matter. And, and again, you have to work for the job. But if he's already got the respect of a lot of people, you have to believe with a new coordinator who may be in his corner, he might have a better shot at potentially getting more playing time. Connor Riley, Dog Nation, joining us here are there any other coaching changes that we need to be aware of? Obviously, none bigger than this. But outside of this, right, the staff is back. Yeah, the staff is back. Munkin is the only departure. I, I think at this point in the coaching uh, carousel, Georgia's not going to have a whole lot more attrition. And, and you look at last year, bring in new offensive line coach, Stacey Saros. Bring in Brian McClendon to be the wide receivers coach, who both had previously coached at Georgia and worked with. Todd Munkin. Fran Brown was someone who I thought might get some consideration for the Nebraska job, given his ties with Matt Rule. And I say Nebraska job, I mean the defensive coordinator job, but they end up keeping him and keeping him around for another year. Obviously, Muschamp and Schumann are back. A lot of the coaching staff that Kirby Smart, I think, routinely praised throughout the year as being a very special staff is back for another year. And, and with Bobo in there, I think it's more of building the same culture that has worked for Georgia before. And it's won them two straight national championships and they're betting on it to win them a third national championship. And earlier I heard Carl, you know, concern about, is this the right hire for Georgia? I'll say this about Kirby Smart. One, I think he's earned the benefit of the doubt to make this kind of hire, given how successful he has run the Georgia program. I don't think there's any doubting that he's doing what he believes is best for Georgia. Two, if for some reason the Mike Bobo hire does not work out, I don't expect Kirby Smart to keep him around simply because he is a friend. I thought in 2019, I thought maybe James Coley was going to get a second year as an offensive coordinator, maybe get another year in the system. Kirby Smart said, no, we're, I, I understand what Coley brings as a recruiter. I understand what he means to the staff. We're going to go out there and try and get better because the goal isn't to try and win 11 games and get to a sugar bowl. The goal is to try and win 15 games and win another national championship. And if Mike Bobo is not holding up his end of the rope, hmm. I don't think Kirby Smart is going to hesitate in the slightest to go out there and make a change to better that Georgia offense. But I don't expect that to necessarily happen, and I do think Bobo is going to show why he's worthy of being Georgia's offensive coordinator. Yeah, and I think we, we mentioned it earlier. It's not a knock on Mark Rick, but, you know, he raised the bar from where you were with Donnan. And then but it, we remember Georgia fans were like, well, when things got bad, well, it was, you know, he's, he's still our coach. And no, now there is no, let's be honest, Connor, the entire energy and vibe at Athens has completely changed. Spent four and a half million dollars on recruiting. The bar has been so raised, mediocrity is not tolerated, and I just thought it wasn't the total package. You touched on some of the volume of the roster, how completely different it was now. Almost everybody goes to the NFL draft. This team is built, this thing's on rails. So I guess Bobo just became, I'm not saying a scapegoat, but because I, I use the phrase, the margin of error was so slim under some of those Mark Rick teams, especially like the six and seven year, that Bobo took a lot of heat. When there were a lot of issues on the other side of the ball defensively. Yeah, I think margin of error there is a great term, Mike. Georgia just operates with such a talent gap over every team they go out there and play. And one thing, in bringing in Mike Bobo back to Georgia, I think he's going to, you know, as hard as this might be believed, further help recruiting. Look, Todd Munkin was not a recruiter. That was not what he was brought here to do, and that's fine. I think with Mike Bobo, you're going to open some doors that maybe weren't necessarily open before. And the player development, which I think we'd all sit here and agree, Kirby Smart has shown us, 
it is about the players. It is about the Jimmys and Joes and not necessarily the X's and O's. Georgia's going to have a talent advantage over just about every team they step on the field against. And, and you do that, you're going to win yourself a lot of games. And you develop the way Georgia has continued to do so with guys like Brock Bowers, with guys like Stetson Bennett, even guys like Kenny McIntosh, which were overlooked by programs like Alabama and Ohio State. When you turn those guys into pros, as Georgia has continued to do, I think you're going to just continue to sort of keep it in a windmill circle where you have you send a lot of players to the draft. That attracts a lot of recruits. Recruits come and play to you. Those recruits then develop into draft picks. And eventually the wheel just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning until Kirby Smart one day decides he doesn't want to be coach anymore, which with the hiring of Mike Bobo, one of his longtime friends, to go along with Will Muschamp, I think is going to be quite some time from now. I just want to be clear because – I'm looking back and seeing all these great picks of Bobo and being a player and Kirby takes pride in having played at Georgia and obviously must champ. And you're telling us don't go right. He's willing to be cutthroat and move on. That's what you're saying. I, 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 yes. I think we've seen from Kirby before if a hire does not work out and I understand, look, it's different when it's with your friends. Yes. And <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Respect. I, I, I can understand that line of thinking. Kirby Smart is hardwired to win championships for the University of Georgia. And okay. I believe that, first and foremost, is his guiding principle each and every morning. And if Mike Bobo isn't getting it done, I don't believe Kirby Smart is going to hesitate. He hasn't shown a willingness to hesitate. We've seen multiple coaches, not just Jim Coley, have one year stints here at Georgia where it doesn't work out. They move on and they find another place elsewhere. If it's not working with Mike Bobo, everything that I have seen from Kirby Smart, and I get it, you know, look, if I'm running a show, I hire my friends, you know, you, you get it. You want to work with people you'd like to be around. Sure. But at the end of the day, Kirby Smart is wired differently than a lot of us. That's why he's the head coach of Georgia. That's why they pay him $10 million a year. That's why he's won two straight national championships. And I fundamentally believe that if things don't go right with Bobo, and I understand why you might have reservations, I'm not saying just you call, but the, the Georgia fan out right. there in general, yeah. I understand if you have reservations, Kirby Smart is still going to do what is best for the University of Georgia. And I think right now, with the way we saw the offensive coordinator market play out in college football this year, I think he believes that Mike Bobo was the best available offensive coordinator hire for what Georgia wants to be going forward. Hey, real quick, before we cut you loose, Connor, I saw him post some photos from inside the Buttsmere building. I know it still has to be adjudicated, and there's always two sides to every story. Ra Ra Thomas's future with the Bulldogs, he's going to be okay? Are there still the, the Georgia football program knows things the, the public doesn't know about this? Yeah, there's still, again, I expect Rob Rod Thomas, the fact that he's still a member of the team, the fact that he is working out with the team, he is still there. Now, there might be some suspension down the line uh, as far as he might miss a game or two, but I expect Rob Rod Thomas to be in uniform for Georgia for the majority of this season. And while the legal process is still playing out, Georgia still believes it has enough in Thomas to have him as a member of this team. Great job, Connor. And by the way, what you just laid out previously about, about Kirby, that's what makes him so good. You cannot yep. have these emotional problems that play into decision-making, and you're saying he does a great job of separating those. And I think a lot of dog fans were curious about the question I asked. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. And I do agree with you. I think it's what makes him great. Great job, man. We appreciate you jumping on a day early with this news today with Bobo and, and Todd Monk, and we wanted to talk to you. So appreciate you. Yeah, as always, it was a pleasure, Mike and Carl. All right, See ya. Take care. That's Connor Riley.